dirt roads to rock crawling, two buck chuck to screaming eagle, moonshine to 50 year old single malt. We talk about it all here on Wheelin' Wine and Whiskey with your hosts, Jason and Chris. Welcome to Wheeling Wine and Whiskey, episode number 23. Continuation here with CJ. 23. Talking about Gaia software. Yeah. And all this mapping software. That's kind of a, a important topic because it seems you get lost like, a lot. Yeah, well, I mean, uh, I get absolutely. lost in a bottle. Well, I mean, thinking about it's kind of neat to to hear about the software and learn about it because I know one of the years that I was doing uh, Adopter Trail with the club uh and I this is no lie, I was <laughs> and I kind of insulted one of the other members. We were way the hell out in the middle of nowhere on the north side of Highway 4. You know, we go in on mm-hmm. 7N09, and we drive around Corral Hollow, and they all, there's like hundreds of spurs up there. Oh, God, yes. And so I turned to Tom, and I said, are we going to be able to get out of here? And he looked at me. He's like, dude, I dirt biked up this whole, I've been dirt biking out here since I was a kid. I know this place like the back of my hand. Okay. And I said, okay, so can we get out of here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you've been dirt biking out here. Do you know your way? Do you so, know where you are? Right. So, yeah. So, CJ is going to, as you said, drop a lot of knowledge on us with regards to the Gaia software, which is totally cool. And I've already downloaded it on my uh, my phone, and I'm going to have to get my iPad and uh, get that fired up and figured out. Perfect. Yeah. So, I know very little. I I am a self-proclaimed non-map expert. Right. So I am looking forward to this conversation with CJ uh, to learn about the software because I know it's great. I've heard from friends that this is great. Um, People that have used it and have been very successful with it. Mm -hmm. So I'm looking forward to learning this and it's going to be one of my uh, to do uh, things for the winter. Is this the stuff that he used for the Arneson 1000? Oh God, yes. Yeah, that was the only way we made it through. We were... That that was an incredible trip, and uh, I mean, paper maps may have gotten us there, but yeah. it was super cool to have live GPS and know exactly where we were and where we were trying to go, mm-hmm. and the roads that could get us there. So um, that's when I became a big fan of the uh, that that mapping software. Where we're going, we don't need roads, badges. We don't need no stinking <laughs> badges. CJ's going to drop some serious knowledge on us now. Oh boy, with the, here we go. Uh, Gaia software, the mapping software. So G A. You, you lost me with the solar. I A. You know. <laughs> well, I know, but and that's pretty bad when you get lost. Yeah, because you don't have your propeller hat. So Gaia. Gaia software. So CJ, talk about this this mapping software. I know Tyler uses this too. Oh, he does. Yeah. Well, Tyler's all geeked out too. I guess. Um, so what is it? Okay, what what is this? What is this this mapping software? And I know you you actually held a class for uh, our club, which was super well received. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't make it that evening. But Nor so, could I. Uh, let's 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 hear about it. Let's let's get the Gaia. We're not sponsored by Gaia, by the way. But but if anybody's listening from Gaia and wants to sponsor us, we'd love to hear from you. That's right. <laughs> All right. Yeah, so a Gaia GPS is uh, just a piece of software you can get from the iOS or Android store. And it turns your it tablet free? or phone into something that uh, is useful on the trail. Uh, there is a free version. There is a really? free version. Okay. Yeah. With his very white voice. Yeah, so it's, it's, it, yeah, Gaia GPS is free, Jason. Okay, cool. Yeah, so what, uh, what, what Gaia does is give your smart device, whatever you have, um, Access to a bunch of maps, okay. and these these maps are downloaded already. You're not dependent on the internet or the or uh, cellular service to make this work. Yeah, great question, Chris. Yeah, uh, you can you can just stream the maps down if you're driving areas where there is cell reception or you have Wi-Fi, but you can download them for offline use, which is the, okay. the, the big trick. Can I interrupt real quick? Sure. Because I just just started downloading the guy app uh-huh. on my uh, app store here on Apple. And it says, choose some activities. And here's the activities it lists. Hiking and backpacking. Uh-huh. No. Overlanding and off-roading. Oh, no. <laughs> they got it right there. 
But the next one is hunting, which is cool. And then they got other. I don't know what your other would be. Uh, but anyways, overlanding and off-roading. So it's a good segue there. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's a great point. It, it, it is a multi-hobby uh, type of yeah, mapping software. Yeah, I mean, software. if you're off any pavement, here we go. Exactly. So it, it, Gaia has been around for Gaia, whatever you want to call it. It's been around about 10 years. Okay. Um, I started using it around nine years ago. I didn't know any different. It was just one of the one of the ones that were out was out there, and I downloaded it and used it. Okay. People made fun of me because it had a weird name. <laughs> and uh, it's really turned into, I think, one of the premier backcountry uh, tools to go off, off pavement. Yeah. And the, the iOS app is, is much more fully featured and is stronger, more bug-free. The Android is newer. Okay. I have a lot of Android friends who use Backcountry Navigator. Um, the big win with Gaia is that you have an account with them, an online account. And so everything you do on your device, as soon as you get back to Internet, uploads your routes to your account online. So you can manage it or modify routes on the computer, okay. which is a little bit easier to interact with. And so, then, or de- find other people's tracks, load them up to the website, to your account. And then when you load your smart device down with Wi-Fi, it just pulls down the latest tracks. Okay. So if I'm, you know, maybe on my lunch break at work, a little bit bored, don't want to do any work, I might go download the latest GPX track uh, for a trail that I want to go do. Okay. I upload that file to my Gaia account. And then when I get home or I'm getting ready for my trip, my iPad logs into my account and gets that latest track. Oh, that's so there's, cool. there's, you don't have to deal with the file management. I just made an stuff. account right now. I'm making this happen as I, you're talking. I think that you mentioned that the Android support's not as good, and I think that part of the reason for that is because the Apple iPad is such a ubiquitous device uh, oh versus the Android tablets. I've never been impressed with an Android tablet. I have an Android phone. I love it. I think it's great. But I actually own an iPad. Uh, it doesn't have uh, GPS or cellular on it, but we we discussed that off the air earlier. Um, but I think that that's why. I think that the iPad is so prevalent that that's why the support is good for it. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, it, it's it's been, worked out great for me. I put a mount in the Jeep. It sits out in the dust. It's not in some protective cover or anything else. Really, the display is bright enough to see in the Jeep. Mm-hmm. It works out darn well off road. And, and uh, the dust doesn't bother the iPad. Doesn't seem to be a problem. I wipe it down when I get home, and interesting. Don't think twice about it. Okay. So, what what makes this so cool? I mean, is it because the maps are hyper accurate, and you can see like for our off roading application, like things like where we're going to be in a couple of weeks, Slick Rock Trail and Deer Valley Trail, and and possibly Corral Hollow. I mean, is this allow you to? It sounds like it allows you to stay on track better than. Any other app out there? Like back in the, uh, I don't know, 10 years ago, we used to have those um, self-contained, you know, Garmin GPS things, a little, well, that would sit on your dash, right? And and now uh, those aren't even really a, a thing anymore because we have GPS built into our phones. So I, where does this fit in into that realm? That's a great point, Chris. I think there's two things that are really nice. One is the large screen. So you can have context. You can zoom in or zoom out. You know uh-huh. You know what you're looking at versus a small little black and white Garmin like in the old days. And I had one as well. I still have one. Yeah. More importantly, those things were great, but you had to use them and to synchronize them and upload tracks to them or download your data was a mess. The the workflow was painful. And I think where Gaia really shines is the fact that the workflow is so easy. So for your your use case you're talking about, we're going to go do a trail. I can go on their website, search for Slick Rock, search for Rubicon, search for any trail, see other people who have made a, a map for that track, uh-huh. and then download it to my account, and then it's there waiting for me when I hit the trail. And you don't have to have service or anything on the trail. Right. So if I do my homework ahead of time and, and pull my iPad down, load the track up, I can then download maps for that track. There's but a you- setting where I can say, hey, for Rubicon Trail, I, I pulled it up on my map. Let's download these map layers for that track. Now, I just use the phrase map layers. What the hell is a map layer? Right. What is that? Oh, boy. So, Here we go. It's getting getting intense now. We're going woo-hoo. deep. Going down it's the nice rabbit hole. To know, nice to know where you are. Nice to know what the track is. Uh-huh. But one of the nice things about off-roading is all these sightseeing, landmarks, old old mines. Mines, yes. Um, I love the mines. W- where yeah, are campsites? What, 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 They're not yours. They're mine. Mine. <laughs> what about fire roads? We got all these weird fire roads. Our adopter trail is like set off seven zero nine. Yes. Well, oh, what yeah. the hell is seven zero nine? And where do I find it on a map? And where does it go? And where does it go? Exactly. And can I drive my buggy on a dirt road to get there? 
and not on a highway. That's the million dollar question. It really is. And if the and trails covered, in, if trails covered in snow, can you find the trail? Well, so that's the other thing. But go on with your finish your thought there. Yeah, I'll just say so. Different these this most of the map software out there allows you to download different layers or different maps that are kind of the underlay to the to, to your location. So it's it's the actual image imagery you see on the screen. So you got like an going. elevation layer, right? I mean, that's one like layer, a, like a topo. Yeah, yeah like topo. a topo. So you got a topo map, a okay. topographical topography. Uh huh. Topographical. Topographical. <laughs> I'm trying to enunciate the big words. You're dropping the big words over there. I'm, oh, I'm dropping. That's a lot uh, of syllables here. Be careful with the syllables. <laughs> but yes, uh, can I buy a vowel? I'll take an A. Um, no. So, so you have how many different? I'm seeing like a bunch of layers on your screen right now. There's probably over thirty to fifty Holy map smokes. layers that you could pick from. So, like campsites? So, yeah, is define that a layer? show us some what are what are some of the layers? Yeah, give us yeah. some of the layers. So here. one of the basic ones is some sort of topo map, right? Yeah. So Gaia has a topo map that they offer that's kind of an open sourced um, version. Okay. It has some basic data. But then the US Forest Service released a twenty sixteen topo that's really accurate. It has all the, the accurate names for the fire roads. Okay. It has oh, the man. different trails. It has the rivers named out. It tells you where the campsites are. It's a really good overlay for a lot of the Sierra Nevadas where we wheel. Might right. be able to find Tyler's secret Lost Lake campsite it's with this Gaia software. It's near a nipple. It's near the nipple. Which is by Blue Lakes. Don't stop it. Oh, I thought you were going to say something else. Okay. <laughs> Go on, CJ. We get sidetracked easily. Beyond those layers, you also can Squirrel. have str- street map. <laughs> you can have- <laughs> It Come doesn't on. show me where the squirrel is, unfortunately. Oh, okay. No, it doesn't show you where wildlife is, bears, squirrels, raccoons. And there's a lot possums, of icons on the National scouts. Geographic one. Maybe there are some things there. I don't. Who the heck knows? That'd be <laughs> weird. Just saying. Wouldn't that be awesome if the, the animals were GPS tracked on your Gaia map? It'd be great for hunting so you season. Knew, you, it'd be <laughs> awesome <laughs> for hunting, for hunting season. season. It does have the hunting thing on there. The, that's where it's going, folks. Well, Jim would get all on board the, with that. It's all like, the, just... the, the oh, God's creatures are going to be, <laughs> be GPS tracked. That's why we tag them, right? <laughs> but they, they'd have us tag, too, just so you know. So the bears would be like, hey, hey. human meat. <laughs> hey, I can run faster than you. I'm not worried. Yeah, I'm sure you can. <laughs> there was a time where you're I could, gonna, I could run longer. You're going to more tasty than I am. There was a time where I could run faster and longer. <laughs> Those are days are over. Anyway. Sorry. Anyway, so way off track. Okay, so the layers. We're talking layers. Layers just allow you to see some stuff that's interesting around where your track is. Yeah, so you can so, turn them on and off. Yeah, you turn them on and off. You can have multiple. The uh, National Geographic recently released some new layers that Gaia is supporting, and you zoom in a bit, and it tells you a bunch of cool details. It has campsite names. It's telling you um, what the ridge is, what the campsite. What, if can you fish there? Are there picnic tables there? Really? Like overnight showers. Oh, I gotta get in on this. It's got a ton of data. A bunch of data. Now, this is not the free version. So that's a great question. All the mapping software out there, the real. The real meat of having a map piece of mapping software is not knowing where you are and the track. That can be any dumb GPS. Right. It's the maps. Yeah. And so a lot of these maps cost money. You buy licenses to get access sure. to them. So different companies that offer uh, these mapping softwares have different kind of agreements and licenses to get you access to those. Okay. Um, so unfortunately, there is usually uh, some sort of membership or subscription or one-time cost to get access to these mm-hmm. maps. They used to come on DVDs on your computer and right. you download them. Nowadays, it's usually with a, with some sort of subscription. So Gaia offers um, one and five year memberships. Okay. Oh. And that gives you access to a bunch of additional map layers that, frankly, are the valuable ones for us off roading. Yeah. Yeah. So gonna, there's a fee involved with. Yeah, there's a what fee. We want. So you know, I think their their default rate is two hundred bucks for five years. That's a lot of money. Two hundred. That's a lot of a lot that's of. Well, Jay, that's Jason money. Right no, there. that's that's that's. Uh, Four or five bottles of bourbon there. Is oh that, wow! In, we either have maps or we, we either have maps or we have bourbon. I don't know. We're don't lost. Know Sorry, but I've got Sorry. five bottles of bourbon. <laughs> <We're>, <laughs> that, that's all you need when you're lost. That's, that's fine. right. <laughs> It's, the real shame would be lo- being lost without the bourbon. But that's stuff. five years. So that's five so years. So what's a one year? A one year is uh, is uh, 20 bucks or 40 bucks. There's two memberships, premium and normal. Okay. Um, premium is the one that I'll, I'll say to your listeners is worth getting. For yeah, what for, we're 40 doing. Bucks. For, so for 40 bucks. So basically 40 bucks a year, which is totally doable. I mean, let's face it. Off-roading is not cheap. Okay? No. So if you're a serious off-roader, we all know we spend a lot of money to go slow. 
and we're fixing our rigs and upgrading our rigs constantly. So forty dollars is totally in the wheelhouse. Uh, two hundred is a little tough to swallow if you uh, you know got an upgrade on your rig, like new axles or something, Chris. Yeah, maybe. Uh, but um, yeah, uh, but it's five years, so you 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 know ROI. Here we go. Are you going to be wheeling in the next five years? Yeah, I hope to be. So, you know, instead of uh, $40 times five, uh, which I'll let Chris do the math because I'm not doing good with math today. That'd be, that'd be $200. So it's the same price, right? 200 Bob. It's the same price until I'll, you look at I'll their take, discounts. So what's... I'll take over landing for 200 Bob. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's Alex. It's Alex. Sorry. <laughs> Alex. I'll take 200 for... Uh, <laughs> wow! Come on down. The price is right because it's only one hundred and twenty-eight dollars. If you know Tyler over at Morflate, what? Seriously? How does this work? So if you go to myoffroadradio dot com, so he's actually worth knowing. He, is that what you're it's telling? It's worth knowing a Toyota guy once in a while. Oh, jeez. So yeah. he's, he's he's got a deal going with them. He's got a deal. So uh, Gaia usually has some discounts. It's like usually one hundred and sixty for the five year membership when okay. they have their promos going on, which okay. is a pretty good deal, right? But if you go check out Tyler's website at myoffroadradio.com. Look at you. You can a get it free plug. for $128. No way. Years. For five years. I've never heard them mention this. I never heard there. this either. Why? How do you know this and we don't? Just went to his website. I don't know. Oh, boy. What? I've never been to his website. Tyler. 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 Uh, we, we, be, need, gonna, we need to I'm, talk. I'm messaging him right now. He's out on the trail, but he's yeah, going to We better call him on Echo Link. Yeah. We sh- oh, yeah. We can, we can yell at him on Echo Link. I don't know. We Over can't talk about ham. anything commercial on No, we ham. can't use any uh, uh, bad language, but we could definitely talk to him. Can't market anything. Anyways, okay, so that we're going to have to put that. Can you put that in the show notes? Yeah, Chris, I think so. Oh, of course. Or, uh, of course. I could put it out on IG, right? Of course. On the gram. Instagram. I mean, I can I can do all sorts of stuff on the website. Look at so, you. Yeah, we'll figure with it your, out. With we'll your make your it happen. Color hat. You can change the world. <laughs> so okay. okay. So that's good knowledge. Um, because yeah, it, with the math didn't didn't pan out there to do forty dollars a year or five years for two hundred. Well, you're like either why, paying you're paying over time or you're paying up front. Yeah, it's but, still but the same why amount of money. would you pay that money? It's it's. Uh, you, no, it's not. As a businessman, that's not smart unless you're getting some discount. And he might not be doing this in five years. Who knows? Yeah, so the price is not bad if you go with Tyler's website. Um, I sent you guys the link so you guys can... Have okay, so we're going to we're gonna put the link out on our webpage, which is what, Chris? www. Do I need to say that? No, you really don't, but most people do Wheelingwineandwhiskey.com, all one word. Right, and then I'll put it out on the gram at Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. Yes, sir. So um, that'd be awesome. There's yes. some there's some good good uh, little info if you've listened this long into the podcast. So one of the benefits of this is that, uh, and I'm wondering, does it tell you, like, if you're going to go on a road that's potentially closed in the winter, does it tell you that that road is not passable to normal vehicles? Wow. I don't believe it does, Chris. Okay. I mean, I say that because but, we, we hear about it every winter about somebody in a Subaru that goes on some road that their GPS tells them to go on and they end up freezing to death because they get stranded. Right. <laughs> right. What, what, there are some new layers now that are more active. So you can there's weather layers as well as fire layers. Oh, I would love the weather layers. That'd so be cool. So you can so, actually see where the la- where, when it's fire season here in California, which unfortunately is a season yeah, here, yeah. Uh, you can actually see the outlines that, as the CDF and other people update fire maps. You can actually keep that data and have it be overlaid on your existing Okay, map so layers. let's say, for example, these guys that are out at Barrett Lake and they got three uh, to six inches of snow, four to six inches of snow last night. <laughs> But you got to get some sort of service in order to get that update while you're out there, obviously. Yeah, that's right. And, okay. And uh, don't quote me on the weather one. Um, okay. I think that's something well, that that's I've kind seen. of intriguing to me. Yeah. And we got we got it on the the ham. My I know my ham has got weather channels. Yeah, you got seven NOAA channels. Yep. And that's really key to kind of keeping tabs. And up in the Sierras, as you guys know, it can change in an hour or two. Yeah. And I I listen to the NOAA to hear I what the weather is like. I listen to NOAA all the time when I pull into whatever camp at Rubicon or Barrett. And uh, yeah, I want to. I want to know what's going to happen that night. So that's cool. Okay. One of my favorite layers, as we talk about, you know, the uses of this thing. Um, it's one nice to know where you are, and nice to have a map of kind of where you've been, or at least 
if you've never been there before, you can download the track ahead right. of time. So you know, you kind of feel like you know where you're going. You have confidence on the trail, even though you've never been there before, which right. is kind of slick. We have an adopted trail, and it's a maze of trails out there off oh Highway gosh. 4. And it's, it's, it's taken us years to mark them with Carsonite signs, the little fiberglass, you know, skinny signs. And it took us forever to get the Forest Service to get us the signs and the stickers to put on the signs. But we did that, and then we put up uh, up in the trees, we got the diamonds, which not only mark the trail in the summertime, but more importantly, the wintertime. You know, as a snowmobiler, you can see where the trail is. Um, but, yeah, so we – Gaia saw – this is where I really – got introduced to this mapping software was this winter well <laughs> it was winter in june when we did our adopted trail yeah so explain how that helped us out yeah so there's a few things along with the, these layers there's these new interactive layers or, or kind of transparent layers that um one of them i really like is the motor vehicle use map mvum wow and it's put on by the forest service and it is an overlay that actually shows all those trails that you can recreate on, um, whether it's uh, winter or summer. And if you've ever been to the ranger station, you get a paper map that has these on there. Oh, yeah. But this is a, a digital version of that paper map. Okay. And it overlays with the software. So one of the things that's really cool about that is, even if I've never been on a trail before and it's winter time, I can overlay this, this route and kind of be following along on this, on this route. Um, I know my location versus this established motor vehicle use. Wow. Route. That's pretty cool. Because the problem with these old topo maps is there's a bunch of dotted lines on there. Yes. That maybe don't exist anymore. <laughs> yep. Uh, whether it's overgrowth, whether it's a hiking trail, it was never a Jeep trail to begin with, etc. So these motor vehicle use maps really show you where you're legally allowed to be. Now, the big thing for us, I think, on our winter wheeling trip in June, yes. was. We've been that. We've done that trail. How many times have you done that, Jason? Oh my gosh! Many. Uh, uh, we've, uh, it's many, many, been many. fifteen plus years that we've had it as our adopter trail, and uh, yeah. So I, I, I think it's safe to say I've done that trail over twenty times. Right, and I, we, I grew up on Highway Four, and uh, have a place. My parents have a place up there, so I've done Corral Hollow maybe thirty plus times. Uh huh. In the winter, it was tough to find. Oh, yeah. And so we're on we're on six, eight, ten feet of snow, and the only way I know that we're actually on trail is that I've got eight years of previous adopted trail trips. Right. And I can load up the old tracks. And every year it's a little different with the trees and GPS and technology changing. The tracks aren't always 100% spot on, but mm-hmm. it's within 20, 30 feet of uh-huh. where I'm supposed to be. So while we were on the snow, snow drifts wheel, and I think I was just kind of trying to average out our location over the previous tracks from other years. So it, it gave us confidence that we were in the right spot. Okay. Oh, it was great. I was following CJ and... I mean, I had no clue. I mean, I, I, you know, there's, there's landmarks out there, right? Certain right. areas you're like, oh, I know where I'm at now. But when it's covered with snow, I mean, that's it. I go on some of these trails in the winter with a snowmobile, and it, it took us, for example, to find Windchill 5 at Fordyce, which I've been on numerous times. It's hard to find when it's buried in snow. Oh, yeah. Especially and so we're up there on the feet. adopted trail, and even with the orange... You know, diamonds that I just spoke of up in the tree up high, right. you know, they're they're not on every tree and, you know, but it, it hits the major intersections and stuff. Anyways, right. I was following CJ and I'm like, are we on the trail? He goes, no, we're right on top of the trail right now. And then when we got up to the top of the ridge and then started dropping in where the, the snow had not even began to melt yet. Yeah. And we got out and we walked and he had, you know, his iPad with the software, and we were walking what supposedly was a trail, there was no way we were going down it because the snow drifts were so big and would lean you and you'd slide right into trees and stuff. Yeah, no, So we were trying to go around and, and create a trail on top of the snow to get down this. And there was no way. It, it, but that, that software helped out a ton, and I'm like, this is pretty cool stuff here. So how accurate is it? Yeah, I don't it's know what, dependent on the GPS receiver in your device, right? Yeah, so one of the things that um, we as um, just citizens and not government yeah. agencies, we don't have access to the really fancy GPS. Oh, okay. We've got consumer-grade GPS, and, and I don't know what the latest is, but it's accurate within a couple couple feet, right? Maybe 5 to 10 feet. I don't, I don't know what the latest stats yeah. are. Lorenzo can look that Probably up. Probably within but, inches. Well, I mean, I, I, I mean, as an example, this is going back when I was at a country club 
that was in getting ready to put a new irrigation system in, the irrigation designer and his crew came out to mark where the heads were going to go. And they used what they call a differential GPS setup. So they had a guy with a backpack and they set a, a, a known set point, which was a transmitter on the golf course. And then they had the backpack and they were, I think they were able to get down to inches with that it. device. Yeah, absolutely. But, um, but it sounds like we're, like you said, we're talking about meters or yards or feet. Um, it's accurate enough is how I'll phrase it. Which, which a, lot is, of these, there you go. a lot of these trails are, um, you know, usually have an easement of about 25 feet from the uh-huh. center line of the trail and you're well within that. Um, gotcha. And over the years, you kind of see where it's gotten more accurate as the devices. The thing to note here is that you need GPS in your device. Well, yeah. there it is. And that's so a good call out there, Chris. If you that, don't have it in your iPad, what happens? Right. Your iPad, um, it, fun thing to know about, the, about iPads and at least Apple devices is you need the cellular chip to get GPS. Yeah, in that cellular that. chip, there's a GPS module as part of that chip. So even if you're never going to use the cellular data on your iPad, if you want to use GPS on your iPad, you... You, it's better to get the cellular version of the iPad. I got you. Okay, so I've got an issue now because I'm I'm listening to you and I'm like, hey, I got this old iPad that I was thinking of using. I mean, it's it's an older one. I sitting there. I was saying I'm in the same it, boat, <laughs> but I don't think it has the GPS. Is there anything I could do, CJ, to make this old iPad work, or do I need to go out and borrow some money from Chris and go out and buy oh. a new iPad with GPS? Wow. I mean, if you have friends like Chris, like, you might as well. I should. But. I should just. <laughs> My interest rates are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> That's but, why you have lots of money. One of the things that a lot of people use um, iPads for is actually pilots. Flyer, uh, pilots use uh, use the all their um, avi- uh, avionics, avionics and true? their uh, maps for their – all their flight maps. Right. And, Flight planning can be done on the iPad now. Uh-huh. I've seen I've seen pilots walking through the airport with their iPad, and the iPads big old maybe didn't have as much as good a GPS. So they actually is a company. Uh, there's quite a few different companies, but one of them I like is Dual. Um, they make Bluetooth GPS modules you can buy. Okay. That add GPS to a non GPS device via via Bluetooth, and they usually generally have a better GPS chip in there, so they're quicker to get accurate data. And um, they might be a little more accurate. I'm not a GPS expert, but so you can buy one of those modules. They're like anywhere from 100 to 200 bucks. Okay. To add on to your iPad, and I think the cellular version of the iPad is usually 150, 170 bucks more. Yeah. So it might be a cheaper way. All right. So I'll have to have look into device. that. So there is an option for me with an old yeah. iPad to because then I would feel comfortable using that iPad in in the Jeep or the buggy because I don't have doors, windows, any of that stuff. So uh, it's going to get thrashed. Yeah, it's good to have an old uh, iPad. Dust you know. and stuff. Yeah, I'd hate to go out and buy a new one. Okay. So that's a good way. Um, and that's one of the things I like about it is I actually run my iPad in my Jeep, but I actually have an old cell phone mount. I used to use it to listen to music in the Jeep. And I have an old iPhone 5. It hasn't worked in – I haven't used it as a phone in probably three or four years. Right. Yet, and it doesn't have cell service anymore. It's just a, it's just an iPod at this point. Right. right. But it still has a cellular chip in it. And it okay. still has Wi-Fi when I'm at home. So I actually have Gaia GPS on that and use it as a redundant tracking um, to track all my trips. And so the iPad, I might use to interact and turn on and off and build routes, but I have a backup GPS kind of with this old iPhone. And okay. it's, just a, it's a free-to-me phone, right? You haven't used it in years. It's sure. not worth right, – right. don't even update it, but I keep Gaia on there, and I can record all my tracks and, and have a cool. separate – Okay. Separate well, look at you. Utilizing the old – Phones and iPads and tablets and stuff. Okay. It's I a like mi- that. It's a misnomer that people think they need to have a cell service to get GPS. Yeah. No. So you no, need the cell no. Most, it's a hardware issue. Not yeah. Not it, not yeah. Correct. So issue. most phones, especially newer stuff, all the new stuff does. But, oh, yeah. But, yeah, has has a GPS already in it. Correct. You don't need cell service. You don't need to be a cell plan. To use that to access that, so that's cool. And you can even download, uh, G- you know, Google Maps onto your phone. I mean, that, that doesn't so, really—it's not Gaia, but uh, I mean, yeah. Riddle me this, CJ Uh-oh. or Chris. Um, so we go out on these remote trails that's heavily wooded. How is the GPS coverage? You know, what happens when you lose GPS when you're using the software? Yeah, it's a good question. It'll usually tell you that 
It doesn't have. <laughs> Sorry, you're screwed. We don't know where you good, are right now. Doesn't have good signal. Uh-huh. Um, you know, GPS is a, is a challenge usually in metropolitan areas with the tall yeah. buildings and the, and them reflecting signals. I've not ha- seen it be much of an issue in our forested trees. Yeah, really? Trails. So, trees haven't, so I don't think. Look bother. at you. Okay, so like our adopted trail. Ford Ice, Rubicon, no problems. I've never had a practical issue where, there, where there's actually an issue. It, really? It, in theory, it, it, you need line of sight to the yeah. sky. But in practice, I've never had an issue. Okay. Well, I mean, I, I remember years ago, I was driving with my Garmin, you know, dash mount. Yeah. Uh, I was driving on tiny eight, screen. On tiny, I was driving on an 880 Non-color. in Fremont, and the map was telling me I was actually driving in the middle of the bay. Well, you might have been. Well, I might have been. Was but I, Lorenzo I wasn't. driving or were no. you driving? My baby was driving. Oh, <laughs> Craig, you drive. There you go. <laughs> okay, so now you got me thinking because Uh-oh. I'm definitely going to be uh, talking to you more offline about this. And you're going to be uh, helping me, un- unbeknownst to you, of um, that we're going to uh, get my iPod, or iPad, I should say, set up. Um, and I'm going to get a RAM mount. I just ordered you a propeller hat. Did you? Too. Did you get me a? Why don't you order up a ram mount for me? No, just, the, I can't afford the a module ram mount, that but I a need. Propeller for the GPS. Hat, your propeller. Go it, ahead, put it on your uh, Amazon account. It's gonna be delivered in three minutes. <laughs> right here by <a> drone. <laughs> <laughs> Wouldn't doubt it. We're close enough to uh, oh, uh, Amazon to do that. But anyways, um, so here's what I'm listening to. All this, right? The gears are turning in my head. Um, getting this mapping software. Uh, getting all my favorite trails downloaded and stuff. Uh, I think there's a lot of data that you have, and maybe I can uh, coerce uh, Tyler to give me some of his data. Maybe. Um, and it's on then, his website. Yeah, it's on his website, right? On on my off-road radio website. Um, and get my music downloaded to this this all my playlist. Oh, on the iPad. Because I have a I have a broken screen old iPhone phone three right. or four looks like, looks that like I use hell. in the buggy because can't, I don't care. Can't believe you don't smash your, or cut your fingers open on I know. That thing. It's pretty bad, the screen. It's the <laughs> only phone that I've ever cracked the screen on. Uh, I ran it over with a golf cart. Um, you, you didn't go over yeah. the handlebars on a bike? I, no, I didn't go OTB. <laughs> um, but <laughs> that's true. Yeah, that's how you broke your screen. That's right. But I'm thinking now, how cool would that be? So everything's in all in buggy. one. Now, is there a layer on this Gaia software that, that tells you like you shouldn't try stupid stuff like the far left line on Windchill 3? Not directly, but you can <laughs> – hey, but, but you can drop a note. You can drop a waypoint for next time. That would, would, would it flash up on the screen you're approaching danger zone? Danger, Will Robinson. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. There are lots uh, of fun waypoint icons. You okay. Could, you could here set yourself an now. alert or a warning for that obstacle. <laughs> here's here's another feature that I think could be built in if it's not already done. Is like, and if because especially if he has his music on on the iPad, every time he hits a certain section of trail, the music l- playlist changes Can to it a certain up something? song. Can I don't it do know. That? You, you I, could probably make that happen. I, I don't know. With your propeller hat. No. That I, would be cool. To put the egg You're timer out. Oh. Sets the mood for the, so, for the trail. So, like, coming up to Windshield 3, I could have, like... Danger Will Robinson. No. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Running with the devil. See? Or, or another one bites the dust. Oh, another one bites the dust. <laughs> there you go. See, that's maybe more appropriate. Okay. With this, well, we might have just dropped a million-dollar idea for these software oh, guys. Oh, shit. Well, we, it's not right live. Now. Okay, so we can so maybe we can cut this out and save it and save it put, put and that figure one on out back, who put can that figure in our that pocket, Crap. or maybe it'll go live. I don't know. All right, so CJ just handed me his uh, his iPad here. So what what am I looking at, CJ? I got the the Gaia software up. Uh, it shows us exactly where we are here um, at Studio C. But what's um, what am I looking at here? I see some. Uh, so usually on the iPad, you put it in landscape mode, and you've got a map on the right-hand side or full screen. At the top of the map is usually your, your current trip, what your elevation is, okay. your distance for that trip, your pace, um, and your average speed. That's really nice. When you're looking at these trails, you know you can go do the Rubicon. It might take you two days, eight hours each day to do the Rubicon. Right. But you look at the track, and you realize your moving time was only eight hours. So was this your recent Rubicon trip? Uh, this is my recent drive home. From the Rubicon. From the Rubicon, 226 miles. From Uncle miles. Tom's cabin. Oh, you were Ice House Resort after that. 
But I'll pull up. Uh, How about Uncle Tom's Cabin, Chris? I like it. Yeah, you only been there once. Was, what's, was, almost, what's her name there? <laughs> she was the. Uh, wait, let me see if I can get this right. She was the the captain of the of the topless badminton Georgetown team. Georgetown badass, badminton team. Badminton booby bouncers. That was awesome. That I you are never had a bad trip to Uncle Tom's Cabin. There's always a story at Uncle oh, Tom's Cabin. Well, my first we story is good, so yeah. <laughs> you got you got to talk to um, Rance. I talked to Rance, yeah, at Uncle Tom's Cabin, which is a fixture there. He's great. Um, so yeah, you had a, but you've been there before. I had not been there before. Oh, that was your first trip. It was my first. Okay, we're going to totally segue to Uncle Tom's Cabin now because I always love to hear people's first trip to Uncle Tom's Cabin. Go. It was exactly what you guys described. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can't just say that. How many people were in there? Uh, so actually, I had, a, I had a unique Uncle Tom's Cabin experience. Okay, good. So Let's we roll that. in um, in the afternoon. You know, it's, this is before snow time, and this is not in the evening where it's, it's beer o'clock. Yeah. And uh, there is a. Uh, pa- Fifteen passenger van parked out front. Oh god! Oh, Whoa! Oh boy. And it is an inside Uncle Tom's cabin are two adults and like six or eight high school kids. Oh boy! And they were are they drinking. They're no, not I don't drinking. Get Uncle Tom. Better again. not a band. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> they were there on. They're actually out camping for a week and doing service projects for the Forest Service. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah, a pretty cool. Boy Scouts or this is high school. High school. Yeah. Okay, and uh, it's through an cl- environmental class that they're taking. Oh, very and, cool! Uh, we're out there. So it was a field trip. It was basically a field trip, and so they went nice. to Uncle Tom's cabin to hear about the history of the cabin and, and the area, and grab a beer, a cold <laughs> beverage. <laughs> they were probably partaking this, the this, tea and soda. There. Oh, okay, they but, do yeah. serve soda. They do serve soda. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes, and it is ice cold. Everything is ice cold there. So we went in there. You know, you've got if you guys haven't been to Uncle Tom's cabin, there's. Unique signs, to say it politely, uh, around the cabin, right inside the cabin. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, you know, sh- sh- shoes and shirt uh, required for service, but other yeah. things are optional, yes. that kind of stuff. Yes. So, you know, the high school kids probably didn't fit in too well into the theme of Uncle Tom's Cabin yeah. at that age. But, Was it uh, smoke-filled? It, no smoke. Rance, okay. Rance smoked on the patio out front Oh, did he? Yeah. Uh, but uh, they, they, they departed a few minutes after we got there, and we got a chance to kind of sit down and talk, and I had a, a C-minus there and enjoyed myself. There you did, you, did you do the dollar bill? You I got didn't, it. You didn't sign a dollar bill. I didn't, I didn't sign the dollar bill. Uh, I will go back. I want to. I want to make a trip of it and do it right. So, oh yeah, I've got a few dollar bills there, and I, there's there's two that I've lost. I can't find it. Maybe somebody went over it or what. But there's one, and I got it lined up with the center of the bar. I go right up against the bar, and I take like three steps back and look up, and my bill's still there from. 2006. Yeah, you found it when we were there. Yeah, the other, I, found, yeah. I can find it every time. That's the only one I can find. The other ones I, are, hmm. are, are gone or what. But anyways, you got to do a bill. Absolutely. Uh, you got to do, do the bill. bill. Right did you go passage. to the bathroom? I did not go to the, go to the, the, the outhouse. outhouse. The outhouse, um, yeah. I, I didn't need to, but uh, <laughs> we, we did have a lot of people checking out the Mog while we were there. So, Rick, oh, Rick so yeah, Zinamog you had the came. Unimog with you. Yeah. This could be a whole separate podcast. Was that had, had year, Rick been there uh, before? Trip. Uh, Rick had never been there, and he's oh. looking, he's looking to do a snow run out there uh, in January, February. Definitely do a snow run. Oh, that's yeah. one of the most popular trips, and that's uh, no joke. Trying to drive up that hill well, from if it's a big uh, storm, yeah, um, to get up to it, Uncle Tom's. That's not no everybody joke. Makes it to Uncle Tom's, right? Which isn't that difficult. You got to get over that hump of snow from uh, well, Ice House Ice yeah, House Road first. I've, I've snowmobiled into Uncle Tom's oh, one year. Yeah, when it got that's really bad, probably relatively and, easy, and nobody could make it on in four wheel drive yet. And we blazed in and snow. That was awesome. That was smooth sailing. But yeah. so I walked in and I didn't know exactly what to expect. I knew about the dollar bills. I knew that it was you know it's a it's a staple of of the Georgetown area. Yeah, if and, if you are traveling and go out to the Rubicon, if you're not from this area. You got to make a point oh, to stop at Uncle Tom's. Absolutely. Yes. What I wasn't prepared for was the satellite television, the Wi-Fi, and all the technology. Well, they've got they've got solar. Yeah, they're. I was set impressed. Up. It, it is fully outfitted. Beautiful grounds, little campsites nearby. Yep, it, yep. It is, barbecue it in is the summertime. It is a place to go hang out and check. Yeah. Out. Well, they live there. I mean, they got yeah. cabins and they live there, and and uh, you know, bartenders come and go, but yep. uh, the rants and them live there and make it happen. So. Yep. They're hearty, hearty souls. That's yeah, for sure. And they got great stories. Yeah, we heard just a, just a glimpse of some of the stories. But he talks about, yeah, some days you're sitting here for three days and no one shows yeah. up. 
Yeah, especially in the winter when there's the winter. storms. Yep. I mean, they're sitting there weathering storms. Yep. Which I could totally do. I, I could see myself being a bartender there at some point. I know a couple. Sorry, of, folks, we're out. <laughs> you know, Ray, Ray used to bartend there. Oh, really? Yeah. They yeah, just walk in there. Ray, Jason, sure Loren- Jason Lorenzo would be there. All the empty beer oh, cans Lorenzo, piled up around him. Lorenzo, he, there wouldn't be any alcohol left. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it wouldn't be good. <laughs> but anyway, it's super cool, huh? Yeah, it was great. it was a great way to finish the trip. It is. That is cool. So, you know, we talked about on the podcast, uh-huh. Chris, we got missed a turn. I missed a turn off. I will take full responsibility. I was excited to be up at the uh, in the Sierras and going over to do uh, the adopter trail with the the Mad, Mad Hatters. Hatters. Yep. And so Chris is following me, and, and, you know, we had a nice lunch in Placerville. We come up, and I make a wrong turn trying to get to this campground. And uh, I knew we were off path when we missed, when we saw Uncle Tom's cabin. And, and so anyway, we got on the, that, the ham that, radio helped us once again. We ended up at that lake. What was it called? Uh, so we ended up at that lake, uh, Stumpy Meadows. Right. And I knew we were way off track. So I said, okay, we got a hold of Tyler and some of the Mad Hatters and, you know, found right. out where we made the wrong turn. And yeah, uh, they're like, hey, you should be here any minute. <laughs> and you were getting all aggro. You're like, I got to get to camp and start drinking. I'm like, let's stop at Uncle Tom's. You've never been there. And you had a great first Uncle oh, Tom's it was awesome. experience that we talked about on our prior. The trees were a little low podcast. going in there. Our campers oh, were Oh, yeah. Scraping. We went in there with truck campers. and I mean, the Unimog went in there. We, oh, we yeah. probably hit more branches than we did. Maybe. But anyways, Uncle Tom's Cabin is always a great, great, great trip. It I is. mean, that's that's awesome. I want to go again. So CJ's got to go back now and sign a dollar bill and, and pin it up somewhere. That's right. He needs to you make it a official. Bill I did. There, right? Absolutely. Do you know where it is? Can you find it? Again? Uh, I think I'll be able did, to find hey, it. Hey, if you had the Gaia software, you could like map it where I it would. is in there. See? And it would start playing certain music. I even mapped my <laughs> return from Uncle Tom's Cabin to my Loon Lake camp spot, so I knew exactly how to get there. In Perfect. See? There you go. It's all coming full circle. Sweet. Hey, wait a minute. Uh, so in Studio C, uh-huh. I got to make a little sidebar here. Uh-oh, another one? I, I just used the, uh, the restroom. Uh-huh. And that fan in there is like an exhaust fan that you'd find in like a uh, Mexican restaurant, man. That thing <laughs> will suck the chrome off a trailer hitch. I, I, my lips were flapping. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been in a bathroom with a louder or stronger vent fan. I've been in commercial kitchens with less of a vent fan than what's in Studio C here. It's impressive. I just got to make that. That is an impressive fan you have, uh, CJ. Uh, Woo! Do not change it. That is unique. You you should have warning signs. I'm going to buy you a warning sign. Well, the lights went put dim in here when you went in exactly. there. <laughs> so I don't have a whole house fan to help cool off the house in the attic. So I just use that fan when I need there to. There it is. That's pretty much it right there. There, there you is. go. Oh, so uh, holy smokes, that's that is impressive fan right there. <laughs> you could barbecue in that <laughs> bathroom and not wow. have a problem with carbon monoxide. No, no doubt. Okay. All right. So, Uncle Tom's, Gaia Software. What else about Gaia Software? I mean, we could spend like two podcasts talking about Gaia Software. But so, basically, $40 a year. Or you use this uh, secret code that Tyler didn't even tell me about. All um, right, that you you got that you know about for a hundred and what? One hundred and twenty-eight bucks for five years. Twenty-eight bucks for five years, that's, that's and you're going to keep the most up-to-date mapping software that they have. And now, is this is this all throughout the United States? Can I go four wheeling on Australia with my right-hand drive FJ uh, Cruiser that we saw last week, or, or where? What's the the parameters of this? That's a great question. Um, there are map overlays for other, other countries as well. I've never used Gaia. Um, actually, I, I stand corrected. I've used it in Ireland and over in Europe as well. <laughs> oh, wow. Go. So it so, is, it is so international. So it's, it's like you can, you can, you're free to move about the country with this software. Free to move. Dog. It, is a, it is a borderless uh, app. Is that Southwest? Yes. Okay. We're looking for a Southwest sponsorship as well. We fly Southwest. We love Southwest. And if Southwest is listening, we'd love a sponsorship. I've even used it to uh, track my canoe paddling on a lake. And really? And miles I paddled. 
So I mean, yeah, I mean it's pretty cool. Like I, I was, I was joking earlier about the overlanding off roading, but it had the hunting. I mean, hiking, backpacking, oh, yeah. any anything off road, uh, off it, off the pavement. It's also really energy even efficient. on the pavement, right? I mean, you you did it, like you say, you you got your tracks back uh, from uh, from Uncle Tom's Cabin Ice House Resort right back to uh, Studio C here, so. It's been also great for KOH when I go down to the King of the Hammers. Um, Holy smokes. That's got, a whole other thing down there because there's, there's no roads. You got Boone Road. There's Boone Road and there's an l- empty lake bed. And so how the hell do you find your campsites year so, to year? And I'll drop a waypoint where I camped l- last year and be able to go right back to it. See, now this is super cool because last year I was trying to guide people into camp that had never been to KOH. And anybody that's been to KOH know it's an absolute shit show. Uh, well, down it's, there and it's getting bigger and, and bigger it's like year. you know you used to be able to raise uh, oh yeah look for the flagpole well that's not happening okay look for the light on the flagpole at night well no everybody's got a light on their flagpole okay look for the 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 multi-flashing light on the no look for the mushroom cloud that we yes yeah, pretty up. much you're gonna need something <laughs> epic in the air for people to find your camp true enough if, if you've never been there before so you know it's like okay you're gonna go past this uh this old winnebago Make a left, and then you're going to come to this kind of Y section, and there may or may not be a beat up Toyota pickup there. You're going to go to the right. So you could drop a pin, let's say, on the software. Now, this is assuming you've got reception out there at KOH to send that out to somebody. But if you, is well, the Jason, software- that's really easy because you go to the cell phone bush. So one of the things at KOH everyone knows about, if you've been there, is the cell phone bush. Now, right. I've heard rumors about this bush, didn't know where it was, and didn't know what made that bush special over any other bush. It's but using Gaia, I got the, I, someone posted the coordinates for the cell phone bush. I put a waypoint in the freaking software, and darn it anyway, my first time to KOH, I was also in the middle of buying a house. I was in escrow. Okay. So I actually went to the cell phone bush, downloaded the DocuSign, and signed the papers to my house at KOH at the cell phone bush because of Gaia GPS. It's evolved beyond that. Oh, has it? No. But is it, is it a uh, red bush or blonde bush or what kind of bush is it? <laughs> oh, my God. You did that. You well, went there? I'm just asking questions. I don't know. You guys are the technology people. It's a flaming bush. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so that's pretty cool. So... Y- so yes, so but what I was leading towards before you totally sidetracked me was: could you at home right now take this software, zone in on Boone Road, uh, Koh, uh, uh, you know Hammertown? Okay, because we know the coordinates of that. And then, can you like estimate if I told you, hey, our camp's right about here, right? Uh, you could estimate that, drop a pin, and make a, a a point that you could send out to our our group that's going to camp together. Yeah, absolutely. So you could you can you can share waypoints, you can share tracks, you can do all that. There's also measuring and routing tools. So some of the things that I've done, especially in the overlanding world, is you know about a route, you know about a road or a forest service road or, right. or a track, but you've never actually been there before, and you can't find anyone else who's will share a track of that trip. Right. I can go into the software, and as long as it knows that certain map layers will know that it's actually a track or a road, Okay. and I can basically trace the road with my finger, and it'll snap. I can dr- drop waypoints along the route, and it'll actually snap and follow the route and give oh. me the actual elevation and the um, mileage on that route versus having to do like kind of... Uh, as the crow flies, right. type of coordinates. Oh my gosh! So it's pretty. Yeah, smart we we need to too. get into this thing a little bit bigger. I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I'm still sold. learning ham. Now I got to learn all this crap. Well, you know, but this is pretty cool. This is a great winter project. It is great winter project. Well, it's good because winter just started. So. Well, yeah, you're going to be building a jeep. Yep. You're going to be building the Barbie jeep up. Yep. And um, I'm going to be taking an old iPad, getting it GPS certified, ready. And downloading the software and my my killer playlist and getting a RAM mount and have it so I can swap between the, the Jeep and the buggy. Yeah. And the truck, right? Why not? I mean, you put it, you've got it in your, your tow rig slash overland got, rig. Yep. Got my, I put all my music on there, same thing you did, and it's, so it's my playlist in the truck for my road trips. And it's compatible with, with Apple CarPlay. Yep. Well, this is kind of exciting. There you go. 
How much is this adventure going to cost? So, you have so Jason, I've got 128 money, so bucks matter. for the software. And then I've got to buy a GPS unit, which you said is another hundo? 150. 100, 150. 100, 150. Okay. No, Jason, no, 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 no. Well, I'm, I'm going to relate. So I'm like six, seven bottles of, of bourbon. and So you're going to buy the next six, seven bottles of bourbon for the podcast. Well, but an axle, then that's... All, I'm I'm into this for about five hundred. Well, that's not part of the podcast. That's part of your rig. This is this is research. I'm doing oh, research geez. for the for the podcast here. <laughs> <laughs> no, so it's attainable. It's it's. Uh, I think that it, well, it's a way cheaper project than yeah, what you're getting into uh-huh. with thousands of dollars. I'll be, I'll say it this way: we go out and do these wheeling trips. It's a hundred bucks in fuel. Period, oh, I know. Just for oh, one trip. Easily. If you get lost, it's more. This might save you from getting lost. You're saving fuel. So the one thing I'm I'm like you know. I guess I could have this on in my pack for snowmobiling. I'm not going to have it on my, my handlebars of snowmobiling. It's too bulky. Well, so that's what's great about the old phone. So I have that old iPhone 5 with an old battery. Okay. And I'll charge it up before the trip, download any maps on it, turn it on to track, and I just turn the screen off. Get, Gaia works in background mode with the oh, screen off on the device. That's cool, too. And that cool phone too. will last all day without any USB So I could have that, uh, an old phone or my current phone in my pocket, which I do. Um, but I do have it in airplane mode when I am snowmobiling. And I'll tell you why. Anybody that snowmobiles in serious backcountry stuff will know why. Because it can interfere with your avalanche beacon. So whenever I'm backcountry skiing or snowmobiling, I've got my avalanche beacon pinging, but I have my phone in airplane mode because they have seen where phones have interrupted that that beacon pinging signal if you get buried in the avalanche. Oh. Uh, Yeah, so. So that's a good call out. The airplane mode used to turn off the GPS chip. Yeah, so. Um, But since iOS... Eight something, it actually does not turn off the GPS chip. So you can put it in airplane mode and still have a GPS. Exactly. So that was that was kind of the point I was getting at. Is like you could still have the GPS going, which isn't going to interfere with the beacon, but you're not you know you're not trying to find a cell signal that could interfere the phone interfering with that. It's a good call out. Okay, cool. Um, see, I can bring that that depth of uh, of technicality to the uh, podcast here. All season podcast. I like it. <laughs> Okay, so that's cool. And, and with that software subscription, you could have your tablet, iPod, dev- iPad device, uh, laptop, your cell phone. All that stuff's all included in that, right? Once you, yeah, you that's you, all universal. You get access to to their their account, and it allows you to see all of your tracks and routes on any device anywhere. Web so form you don't pay a price device. per device. It's just no. one. yeah, it's a, no, it's it enables thing. everything. Okay, yeah, that's so cool. This is pretty cool. So it's like it can be on your laptop, Android phone, iPhone. Uh, when we talk to the Android, it supports not as good as the iOS support. That's what I've heard. It's just a little bit buggier, is what I've heard. It, it, they're okay. still working out some quirks, but the reality is, is it's kind of the dodge of uh, you know apps. There is what that is. I guess. Oh for boy, that, for that. Here we go. Android deal. The most important thing is it's free to get access to and play with. You don't have to get the membership right away. So download it, start recording your trips and tracks, and then um, once you start tr- recording your tracks, then it's kind of cool to go back and, and realize, hey, let me look at different map layers. What else could I have seen if I was cool. out there? So. No, I mean, I, I've always wondered and with these layers, you know, what are we missing This that's uh, a 10-minute hike off the side of the road here and there's, or a trail? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there's like when cool we were waypoints. at Meadow Lake, we got out of the rigs and we hiked up to those different mines that were, you know, straight uphill and I was dying. But uh, uh, there's a lot of stuff I'm sure that we're missing that's just off the off the side of the road yep. or off the side of the trail. Like, uh, okay, so what about, like, talking about Barrett, is the uh, plane wreck on there? Which is it's what? Like, that's a couple mile hike up the hill. Yeah, into desolation wilderness there. Sweet. Yeah, it's a good question, Jason. Uh, it, it actually is. It's not on any of the layers on the maps, but um, if you search for Barrett Lake on the crowdsourced 
list of routes and tracks that people have done for the, okay. the Gaia community. Uh, I actually happened to download a Barrett Lake uh, route before we did the trail, just so I knew where I was through, going. Through their website or through, something? Through their website. Oh, really? Okay. And then um, when I got to the, when we actually got to our campsite at Barrett Lake, I realized the track kept going, and that track goes to Lake Number Three, right where that that where, plane wreck where, is. Where? Yep. Yeah, that's the, cool. Okay. So that's the, another thing about Gaia is it's fun for yourself. It's fun to share with your club and group, but it, there is a public. There is a way to share your routes publicly on the on the website, and so there's a curated database of wow. all these tracks and routes. Oh. So if you're wanting to go do something like a Lost Coast trip or a Hawaii right. road trip, somebody's done it before you. Chances are good there's somebody else done there, and you can download that, and you kind of have a little bit more insight into the trip. And they can make some notes on their map. I mean, I'm sure you can enter the data, right? Waypoints, stuff like we talked about. Of like, hey, go check this out. Just off the the this route is so and so's bar and grill that you go get a sandwich at or something right or uh, a mine or a great, bar- a great barbecue place in placerville i don't know all right yeah i can see where my winter's going right now in between skiing i'm going to be working on all this yep all right so that's pretty cool so a lot of great information yeah uh, check it out um if you have any questions feel free to email us and we'll forward them to CJ. Yeah, we will. We'll forward them to to our guy expert, uh, CJ. But uh, yeah, uh, Chris at WheelingWineAndWhiskey dot com or Jason at WheelingWineAndWhiskey dot com. That's right. And uh, we'd love to hear from you. You can also hit us up on the gram at Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. And uh, yeah, ask us questions. We'd love to hear from you. And uh, I'm pretty excited about this software. Oh, it's cool. I you know I sad I missed that that thing you did earlier this year with the club and uh but i think we got kind of a broad brushstroke thing and i want to dig into it a little bit more so pretty cool stuff okay that was an absolutely awesome talk with cj as he educated us uh, quite a bit on gaia software i'd like to extend jason and my uh, appreciation and thanks to cj for taking time out of his day to meet with us and and tell us all about gaia Thank you, CJ. We appreciate it very much. Also, I wanted to mention uh, CJ has an Instagram that is uh, Rusty Lid Off Road. That's all one word. Rusty Lid Off Road is his Instagram, and he also has a website that's uh, www.rustylidoffroad.com, where is where you can find him, and he's uh, got some good stuff in there. Um, we also mentioned uh, a discount code for the Gaia software subscription through Tyler's website with My Off-Road Radio. Uh, so you go to myoffroadradio.com, and uh, there should be a link there somewhere on his website to uh, be able to get a, a nice discount on the uh, Gaia software subscription. So, yeah, awesome stuff. Uh, thank you for tuning in and listening to this latest episode of um, Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. Jason, I appreciate you uh, tuning in and checking us out. Uh, as always, you can catch us on our Instagram at Wheeling Wine and Whiskey. You can also see us on our website at, at uh, wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. And uh, our emails, if you want to send any <laughs> nice emails to me, that's Chris at uh, wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. And of course, Jason is uh, Jason at wheelingwineandwhiskey.com. We love to hear the feedback. And uh, hopefully you are continue to enjoy the show. So, uh, as always, we're out. <laughs> <laughs>